Does size matter to you? Yes. It does? It does. What is your ideal size? I want to say my ideal size is probably within like, like 9 to 10 inches. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty big. Yeah, I like it really big though, you know, like if it's small then I feel like I can't really enjoy it as much. Okay, so you like a size queen? Yes. Got yes. it. So you said you like 9 to 10 inches. I want to see if you can guess 9 to 10 inches on this tape measure. Probably like that. Let's see what we have there. Show the camera. Okay, it looks like you got right at 8 inches. 8? Mm -hmm. Okay, alright, I was close. You were close. <laughs> Honestly, but that's still pretty big. Yeah, this is pretty big. Yeah. I like it thick too. It has to be thick, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so you like it almost bigger like bigger than, than my head, almost. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. Okay, that's definitely big. All right. Oh, this gem of an example of a Western intimacy liberation is so stunning and brave going on the internet and putting on blast the amount of meat she requires to have her guts properly rearranged. I mean, this has to be uh, one of those cases that women will say their past doesn't matter. Of course it doesn't because we are looking at some future wife material right here. I want to uh, change this up a bit. Ladies, do you actually think this woman can 100% change her ways and as all of you like to say, she will deserve better? <coughs> And I don't mean a foot long type better, by the way. You know, for the most part, men will say that a taco transitions into roast beef over time, but there are exceptions to that rule, and uh, I think we uh, found one here. In all honesty, I still am amazed that women can act like this in their youth, and they think that time will erase their past, and magically, they deserve the guy they want. And I am confident that guy will put a ring on it, no questions asked. <laughs> Moving on. I'm going on another first date in like three minutes. It's a coffee date. There's nothing wrong with a coffee date. I just don't think I've ever been on one for a first date. Like usually it's drinks or we just sit in a park and hang out. But this guy was like, oh, let's just meet here. He said, meet for a chat. So I don't know. I don't have low hopes about it, but I'm kind of like, I don't know, a coffee date, whatever. At least it's easy to just get a vibe check, see see how that is. Plus it's easy to escape if it's bad. Also because it's a coffee date, I'm not gonna like go take a shot and I was drinking last night, so no need for that. I feel bad, that was not good. That was not a good date. It lasted like 30 minutes. We didn't even get coffee. <laughs> I saw him and I was like, hey, should we get a drink? And he's like, no, I don't really drink coffee. Let's just go for a walk. Okay. And you know when you meet someone and it's like instantly not a vibe, like instant, there was nothing. I didn't want to be rude though, so like we walked aimlessly around the block for like 30 minutes trying to make conversation. I've never said so many, mmm, mmm, cool, in my life. I'm, I'm pretty sure he embellished his height because I'm not that tall and he lied. This is a great example as to why coffee dates are the best types of first dates. Note, neither one of them had to invest a huge amount of money or time. In fact, they went for a walk and talked which was even better than coffee. The funny thing is she felt it was a bad date and didn't vibe with the guy. I can honestly say he probably picked up on her possibly being more of a party girl. I mean, she admitted she was drinking the night before a coffee date, yeah. He also probably figured if he walked around with her, it could work out as a vetting technique. What? What are you talking about? Okay, think about it. He is going to find out several things about her. Number one, how does she uh, react to sudden changes of plans? Number two, depending on the walk, he can figure if she has any type of health issues or if she is out of shape. Number three, if she had an issue with the uh, idea of a walk and demanded he get her something, it would show her level of maintenance. And number four, with all the distractions basically off the table, he will find out if he can maintain a conversation with her. I think this vetting uh, process worked because if you notice, she really didn't have any type of big red flag gripes about the date other than it was short and her not feeling a connection. Gentlemen, I have said this before, don't go on dinner dates on your first date. I am willing to bet this guy got more intel 
on this queen in a 30 minute walk than most men can get on a two hour dinner date as the woman who is getting the free meal would probably be more interested in stuffing her purse uh, full of a half dozen uh, free rolls than give you the time of day. Whatever. Moving on. All right, y'all, I had the worst first date of my life last night with a self-proclaimed nice guy, and I have receipts to prove it, and now I'm kind of terrified you're gonna wanna see this. I'm a single mom, and last night my mom watched my young daughter for me uh, overnight, which she does once or twice a month, and so uh, anytime we get a night off, I'm like, oh, I wanna get some sleep, but I have plenty of time yesterday to go get some drinks and then still get lots of sleep, so I do what anybody does. I get on Hinge. Um, there's a guy named Caleb who messages me and asks me almost straight away to go to drinks. I say, yeah, I actually don't have my daughter tonight. I was very clear that I have a child. That's important, and uh, I was clear that I wanted to get some sleep, so it would only be, you know, just for a little bit, but I'm happy to go meet him for drinks. So we go and meet for drinks uh, near my house, but not, he doesn't know where I live. I don't know where he lives, I didn't go to him. And um, the date was okay, I guess, but I got really bad vibes, I was really scared. So, um, I, you know, after about an hour and a half, I say, hey, I gotta go home and take a nap, thank you, or go to sleep, thank you so much for, you know, the date, I appreciate, it, it was nice to meet you. We walked out to our cars, I gave him a side hug, not even a front hug, no kiss, I said, thank you, good night, get in my car, turn it on, wait for him to leave a little bit because I was terrified he was gonna follow me home. That's how bad the vibes were. And then I got out of my car and went back inside the bar to wait a little while. And I told everyone that I was terrified to go home because I thought he was gonna follow me home. I am fascinated to view these receipts this woman is talking about. She claims she was terrified after the uh, date. None of us were there and we can only go off what sh this scared single mom is saying. Before I break it down, the way she describes how terrified she is, you think she went on a date with a slasher who, uh, showed up with a two foot machete to get a nightcap with her. But in breaking this down, so far what we have is they met up at a bar, which I'm going to assume had other patrons. They sat down, they had some drinks and talked for an hour and a half before she left. Now ladies, this is the part I have some contention with. You see, she claims she was terrified because of the vibes, but not just did she walk out of the bar with the guy that she's terrified of, she gave him a hug. What the hell? Um, does anyone else find that part right there just a tad bit sus for her being afraid for her life? Show of hands for everybody who knew. Bingo. That's like me saying I was next to a grizzly bear, I was afraid for my life, so I stood next to it and rubbed uh, honey all over myself. On top of that, she was afraid the dude was going to follow her home, so she went back into the bar after he left. Ladies, don't get me wrong, I'm trying to point out what you should not do if you are legit concerned for your safety. Um, your functioning locked vehicle is far safer than getting out of your car and going back into a bar. If you are afraid you are going to be followed, drive to a police station or drive to a mall or a large shopping center where you can easily blend in with the traffic flow. Then take the long way home. This story shows not the best choices for safety so far. Okay. Hello. The text messages I'm about to show you are what happened next. I wanted to make sure everything was time stamped. So we get to the bar at 9.52, I was there when he got there, okay? And then we are done um, an hour and 40 minutes later because I get back inside the bar and I get this text message from him pause to read but it's really concerning he tells me to quit playing with him um and he doesn't really give me much time to respond uh he's basically said uh he would have made it worth my time um somehow all these are implying that like he would have given me money which he commented a lot about that on a date but weird then my fears were confirmed he was waiting at the gas station down the street hoping i would change my mind he waited there for 30 minutes i told him i was headed to bed uh all of this pause to read um I said, this was just a first date. He said, I'm not here to argue. I'm not upset. Again, pause to read. He said it was only free night of the month. Uh, and you seem fine sleeping alone. I am fine sleeping alone. Thank you. Um, I, I, he thinks I wasted my time. I said, well, it, it wasn't a waste, but you obviously have priorities that I are different than mine. Um, all of this time, I'm still at the bar. The bartenders are like, you need to wait till we know he's gone. That's, that's how bad it was. So literally, he would have literally done anything for me. This man just met me. There's going to have to be a part two. It's scary. Yeah, I read the text messages. I'm sorry, but maybe I'm just a dense gorilla. But the guy didn't seem aggressive at all. When she mentioned him saying, quit playing, that was out of context. As he clearly said, after trying to get invited to her place, quit playing with me and let's go shopping tomorrow. We could at least do brunch. Was it the brunch part that is supposed to paint him as a Michael Meyer somehow? He also said he didn't sense any amount of interest. He was moving on 
and good luck to her. She should have left it right there, but she is the one who kept the conversation going. He even admits he looks like a bad guy, but he wanted her to give him an opportunity. So far, he seemed polite. He was going to the gas station hoping she changed her mind. He admitted that he was probably the loneliest person in the world, but at least he was honest. It was at this point, uh, this terrified Kaween started using profanity by saying uh, she is ducking confused. And the guy said he wasn't going to argue. The rest of the conversation, at no point does it seem violent or intimidating or any threats whatsoever. This really looks like she either misread or misunderstood the situation. Sorry there, Kaween, but upon auditing your receipts, I can clearly say uh, your math does not add up. <laughs> Squeeze me? Oh, no, you dick. Moving on. Get ready with me to go to an aquarium. Like, the last time I went to an aquarium was literally on a hinge date. This was, like, a year ago when I was, like, just getting into college. It was rough, okay? Actually, that would be, like, one of the worst dates I've been on. And, like, you have to be, like, pretty terrible to ruin an aquarium date. So basically, this was like during my hinge era, and like it was just not working out for me. But on one of these hinge dates, a guy asked me to go to an aquarium with him, and I was like, sure. Okay, honestly, I literally had like nothing better to do, because it was like my freshman year of college, and I was literally just stuck in the dorms. I don't know how to drive, I don't have friends, so like what else am I gonna do? And like the second I step into this man's car, I'm like instantly getting the ache. I walk in there and this dude has one leg up right next to the steering wheel while I'm meeting him for the first time. And like literally if that was not tragic enough, it literally gets worse. Every time this guy would speak to me, spit would be flying out of his mouth. I swear while I was speaking to him, I felt a few droplets landing on my face. So it was like one of those times where I had to carry the whole conversation because I would ask a question and then this dude would just give a one word answer and then just not even ask a question back. Ladies, those of you out there that can uh, relate to this young Kaween's gripe starting off, I have to ask the obvious question. You do know you can uh, turn around and walk away, right? No, 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 no. I understand you don't want to be rude, but uh, that wouldn't just save you a headache. It would not waste both parties' time. The reason I mention it is so you clearly understand why my male viewers make the comments they make. To be honest, I can't say they are wrong if you decide to stick it out on a crappy date. It does seem you are a glutton for punishment. Let me put it this way. Why don't most men feel an ounce of pity for women like this? How come, tell me why? Say it! Say it! Because it's obvious she was using the guy to get a free form of entertainment at an aquarium. Men don't care how your fifis got bent out of shape when you are, are freeloading an experience even after admitting you were getting some hell nah vibes from the guy. If anything, men will label women like this disingenuous little liars who just want to use men for their resources. Either that or they just need an excuse to uh, plaster on the fake up. How dare you? But before we actually get to the aquarium, we're like, wait a minute, I'm kind of hungry. Let's go eat. Of course, I'm going to say, oh, I'll eat anywhere. You know what I mean? But you know, that doesn't mean anywhere. This literally picks Starbucks. Like I'm grabbing one of those sad little soggy sandwiches that are right in front of the cashier. Anyways, after we eat, there's still time to spare, so this dude just suddenly decides he wants to go shopping. But basically, we walk into the Nike store, and then this dude starts treating me like I'm his own personal shopper. Like, we walk in there, and dude just goes, mm, I want a black zip-up jacket. It was okay, though, because, like, lucky I wanted to use this as an excuse to split up from him in the store. So, like, I literally just, like, walked off and started looking for some black jackets for this dude. After that catastrophe, we finally went to the aquarium. As I'm in the middle of enjoying these beautiful animals, this creature tries to grab my hand. Okay, if you know me, I'm literally just going to hold this man's hand instead of, you know, because I feel like that's awkward. So, like, while I'm walking hand in hand with this guy, I'm trying to look for a way out. So as we're walking, I spot some jellyfish, and I came up with the perfect plan. Sorry there, queen, but you said I will eat anywhere. That is exactly what it means. For as much as you ladies want to uh, wrap the actual definition of uh, words to your current feels, it doesn't work that way. Speak up or forever hold your BS. And again, this woman goes with the uh, typical female tactic of I want this guy that I don't find attractive to pay for me having a good time, only for me to complain about it later. Ladies, men don't see these women as any type of victim. They are seen as predators. I mean, she has 
been saying it the entire time, but is okay with holding his hand just so she can go around an aquarium. That's like a guy moving in with a woman who is a uh, one out of 10 because he doesn't want to end up homeless. At least men will usually be upfront about that. Oh, and she has an awesome plan brewing to get away from the, uh, the guy. Hey, sister, how about this super awesome plan? Uh, go up to the guy and say, please take me home. Or if not, walk out and call a lift ride. It's not that complicated unless you have an ulterior motive. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Like, I don't know who this guy thought he was trying to hold my hand on the first date. But I feel like that's only acceptable on a first date if you guys are actually comfortable with each other. I was clearly not comfortable with this guy, so I look at the jellyfish and I go, Oh my god, jellyfish! I let go of his hand and start running. After that, he didn't try it again, thank god. But after we left the aquarium, he tried to ask me to go to dinner. Clearly, I did not want to be like within two feet of this man anymore, so I just lied and said that I was busy and had plans with friends. So this dude ended up being all like, Oh, okay, I'll drop you off at your friend's house. I was kind of like, fuck, like, I don't actually have plans like that. So I literally just, like, made him drop me off at my friend's apartment. Anyways, thank God the story comes to an end, and I never see that man ever again in my life. This is the finished makeup look. Now I have to pick my outfit. Um, I don't know what to wear, but all I know is that this outfit needs to look good, because I'm going to take pictures. Um, I just got this jacket from H&M, so I think I'll try to style this. This is what we have so far. I think I want to wear a skirt with it, but I don't know what skirt... Um, I feel like this would look really good with a brown skirt, but I don't have one. And so this is like the only skirt I have. Um, this is what we have so far. I'm not that crazy about it, but I really don't have anything else to wear. Um, I'm in my mom's bathroom and I'm going to use her straightener. Um, this is the hair. Okay, thanks for watching. Yep, if I had to suffer those last 30 seconds as I search for content to audit, I figured my viewers should get a small taste of what I go through so you don't have to. You're welcome. Now. Again, ladies, this is a uh, common thing women do. They use men they aren't attracted to so they can get shown around. At the same time, men will say women like this will gladly run into the arms of Chad slash Tyrone based on looks and uh, jackhammer power alone. The Chad was great. <laughs> now, I'm not going to slam women for that. The reason being is this is a direct result of the abundance of beta and chumps out there who offer to reward women like this just for existing. Sorry, gentlemen, I cannot in good faith get extremely upset at women like this for taking advantage of the white knight thirsty suckers who offer this to them. No, I'm a fair gorilla and I hold each and every chump who gives these women access to their resources accountable for feeding into this. The sad thing is women get uh, betas to pay for uh, their dinner while Pookie plows them for free. I'm just saying, if you enjoy this audit, click on the video in the end screen for more content. If you would like to support the channel, please follow the link in the description to donate to our beer fund. Or like, subscribe, and share this video on other social media platforms. If you agree or disagree with anything about this audit, please let us know in the comments. I'm going to leave this audit right here. I'll see all of you in the next episode.